Good evening, dear Kuwait television viewers, and welcome to another new episode of your weekly program, Kuwait in 30 Minutes. The English News and Political Programs Department has prepared a variety of reports to highlight the main events that have recently taken place across Kuwait. Our committed team of reporters is constantly engaged in numerous events with the objective of keeping you, dear viewers, aware of the latest information, regulations, and policies. Our aim is to help you obtain information on the latest developments at the local scene. In tonight's episode, uh, we have a very uh, special guest who specialized in youth motivation. He has a new initiative uh, which aims to motivate and advise the youth to self-develop and uh, prosper. With us tonight is Mr. Fahd Lanizi, who has studied abroad majoring in political science and international relations. Mr. Fahd, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, definitely a pleasure having... Pleasure is ours. Uh, Mr. Fett, can you tell us uh, about your initiative and support for the youth and why did you actually choose to support uh, the youth? Um, first of all, uh, my focus is the Kuwaiti youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I chose Kuwait Kuwaiti youth is because I'm a Kuwaiti and I love this country. Mm -hmm. um, I, want, I would like to uh, uh, encourage our Kuwaiti generations, uh, uh, make them aware about how, what they can be and what they can accomplish in life, uh, what setbacks they can do, mm -hmm. uh, how to motivate, mo motivate them. Um, we have a lot of people that worry about the daily negativity or uh, by daily negativity that happens to them in their daily life, mm -hmm. which is normal. Um, uh, and that is basically just a really brief thing about the initiative that I want to uh, hopefully encourage them. That's amazing. What is the motivation? Why is it important to move forward? Can you tell us more about it? Uh, motivation is, uh, to me, is something that, uh, any, uh, motivation, uh, you have to... Uh, In order to keep, to keep us forward, we need motivation. Exactly, but mm -hmm. motivation can come from either you mm -hmm. or it can come from someone else. And this is something normal. Mm -hmm. um, to get motivated, you need to realize what happened to you. Or you, you need to uh, be aware that you are motivated because there is something you want to change. It's something that you want to succeed. And it's, it's a major thing in life. If, you are, uh, if you're a news anchor, if you're a news mm -hmm. anchor, you are motivated. You're in front of the camera every day and you are motivated. Because not only because you got used to it, it's, it's because you're, you're motivated. You see yourself in this particular uh, profession. Profession, yeah. yeah. Of course, of course. So, what are the motivating factors that the Kuwaiti youth should focus on? To be honest, we, the Kuwaiti youth, especially the Kuwaiti youth, mm -hmm. right, and, and talking about not only the Gulf area but the Middle East. Uh, the Kuwaiti government is motivating every Kuwaiti citizen in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to take advantage of these things. Uh, the Kuwaiti youth are getting motivated every day. But unfortunately, there are people that don't, are not opening their eyes onto these things. Uh, we have, um, uh, of course, I'm not going to uh, say most, but we have a lot of Kuwaiti youths where they are working right now mm -hmm. in governmental places uh, and they wake up in the morning, sign in and go back home. I can see that smile on your <laughs> face. So I, I know where, uh, I, I know what your, uh, why that smile came out of your face, um, which is something, I have nothing wrong with it. You know, it's something that they do in their life. But by the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to be in this job for at least mm -hmm. f minimum five, ten years. Some people stay there for the rest of their years, right? Yes. And the only thing that they do is sign in in the morning and then sign out in the afternoon and then go back and uh, have their daily li lives. And th that is not motivation. That, that brings them down. Uh, that is something that I feel very sorry for. Not most of them, but some of them. And I, I hope they are aware of the mistake that they're doing because they, uh, this is not affecting them right now. It's going to affect them in, in the long run. 
Exactly. Yes. Actually, this situation where we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, ha ask you a question about this, about sure. this uh, uh, particular situation later on. But let's talk about the new business starters. Uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of uh, new businesses, Kuwaiti businesses, yes. uh, which is amazing. But what would be the lesson one on one to start with for these new business starters? Uh, never be scared to take a commitment. To take a step take forward. Take the risk, huh? Never, never uh, hesitant. Be hesitant just to take a step. Mm -hmm. Take a risk. Sorry. Um, uh, for for example, I, I want to give you a very normal example. Sure. Let's say uh, opening an ice cream store. You don't know anything about an ice cream store. You can open an ice cream shop, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to go ask someone, just go to an ice cream shop and just see. If you don't have ideas, the second you just go there automatically ideas are going to rush through your brain of course you could do something better oh you know what i don't like the way he put the ice cream machine over here if i want to if i have the shop i'm going to put it over here so these are automatically uh, we have yani, uh, we have a lot of uh, lawyers in kuwait mm -hmm. specialized lawyers that um, uh, that their specialties in on uh, businesses and, and private companies and and uh, they uh, a lot of them give advices uh, I don't know if for free or not, but uh, yeah. this goes back to them. And you know, uh, the 101, the basic 101 is basic 101. It's like it's like business class. They teach you business 101 teaches you needs and wants. Wants are something that you want and it's something that you can live without in your life. Needs are something that you can't live without in your yes. life, which is water. True. True. You know, yeah. So uh, you know there are setbacks at school years and workplaces or even the markets. How should young people deal with these? situations so um, now I, I know I, I graduated from political science major but I, I'm trying not to talk about politics <laughs> uh, talking about education is uh, something I'm not specialized in education mm -hmm. but I can I can not, I can give an advice uh, hopefully I'll change something uh, hopefully this is something amazing if I can mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately in Kuwait we have most of the Kuwaiti uh, students that went to governmental school go from governmental to private school. And the reason is, is because education in Kuwait, governmental education, we're talking specifically governmental education, mm -hmm. has been the same for at least 100 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Around that, right? And you ask yourself, why? Now, let's say, let's talk about a, a private school. I can name private schools, but not specifically, but just academics. Let's talk about a British academic school, uh, uh, the A-levels, the O-levels. Um, you know, when you're in ninth grade, tenth grade, high school, they, te they, they teach you how to take classes. You literally go there and you take classes. Mm. Um, you sign up for business, you sign up for commerce, for accounting, for physics, for mathematics, for algebra, algebra one, algebra two. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, in these governmental high schools, we don't have these. And and yeah, I mean, nowadays, yeah, the reason why academic schools are better is because they teach us how to get ready for yeah. universities. Yes. yes. Exactly. So in governmental school, uh, they don't have oh how to buy a house sales. Oh, exactly. See, mm -hmm. Sales is something. Exactly. Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm doing political science. Mm. Uh, for example, if I'm working in a political uh, sector right now, no one is going to ask me what's uh, the square root of 38. Of course. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, right. uh, that's all right. Yeah, that's, that's one of the main uh, things, you know, educate our, st our students and change the education. For teaching them French and uh, English, there's nothing wrong with that. But changing it would be better. You know, ne never take something. Always replace it. If you stop something, it's bad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if, if stopping something bad sometimes causes an effect. Mm. Something bad. If you stop something bad, it causes an effect. Uh, I'll give you a very brief example on what I say by stopping something bad. It causes an effect. For example, if we have a political party, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not talking uh, over here in I Kuwait, understand. but if we have a political party and those uh, political parties are, um, uh, they're used to 
finishing everything on bribery. Mm -hmm. uh, for these, for these, uh, and then a new party comes over and takes. They stop the bribery. There's nothing wrong with that. But remember, replacing it would be better. Replacing it by giving the people more salary, higher salary. Replacing it by giving people uh, health care. So replacing something is always better. And back to education, when you replace something, when you replace uh, math with algebra, right? When you replace basic science with physics and physiology. That's actually amazing. These are very amazing tips. I never thought of replacing something. Replacing, uh, see exactly, when you, when you take something bad, you're doing something amazing. But never just think about taking something bad. Always think about, okay, if I'm going to take it, what's going to happen? Nothing is going to happen. Some people are like, no, you know what, leave it, leave it this way rather than nothing. Exactly. Basically. So I think better. I think replacing something is always better than just taking it. Of course. From, you know, from You're totally nothing. Right. Exactly. Yes. yes. So I just want to ask you, uh, Kuwait provides various opportunities on different levels for the younger generations. And we already talked about this. But how should the youth take advantage of such services? Um... Uh, I'm going to say one word in, uh, in course, Arabic. Of course, of course. Allahumma alhamd shukr that I'm a, I'm a Kuwaiti citizen. Uh, I, I have never seen a country on this planet where um, it gives me everything that I need. Uh, everything is paid for for me. Mm -hmm. I, we don't, a lot of people don't take advantage of, of these things. Now, if you graduate from, from university and you don't, want to work. You want to mm -hmm. work in a private sector and specifically talking, you want to work in your private sector. You want to open a company. The, 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 uh, the government gives you something called, um, uh, they, they call it work, uh, uh, work, job help, work help, that uh -huh. Yeah. So the, the, the average of, if you graduate from a university uh, with a bachelor's degree, is a, uh, over 700 KD, which is there's no this, country. This is a motivation, actually. It should motivate people to there go and work. There is no country on this planet, mm. and I guarantee you, there's no country on this planet yes. where sure. you can find a, a, a country where you graduate and you can go rent a place, start a business, and they'll give, you, they'll help you. Even though if your salary, even though y y your business is going down, mm -hmm. even though if your business is going very high up, even though if you're making two million Kuwaiti dinar a year, they'll still pay you seven hundred and something over seven hundred Kuwaiti dinar. I'm That's talking about true. bachelor. I don't know. If there are like uh, people that are under. Yeah. Like uh, people that have high school degrees. Mm -hmm. People. I, mm -hmm. I think they give them under. I, I don't. I don't want to specifically talk about this. So uh, going back to your question. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of people taking advantage of these things. Uh, nowadays, we see people, they just need, and you know, a, a human being is naturally, naturally uh, greedy. Sure. You, they want more. Mm -hmm. they want, everyone wants more. I want more. They'll, uh, they'll buy a 2019 car. They'll see another car, a better car, just a, a, a few thousand dinar more advanced, for example. No, 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 Speaking money-wise, they want that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you know, when you when you talk about uh, a natural human being being greedy, so you expect something different. Uh, a lot of people care about, oh, look, look at, uh, look at them. Oh, they're not doing the the streets. They're not doing this. They're not doing this. Uh, why not focus on your own things? That's something different. I don't want, again. I don't want to talk yes. about politics, <coughs> but. Um, Focusing on your lane is something different, mm -hmm. something amazing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, I mean, we, we, we live in a country where I, there's a roof on top of me and there's a bed that I'm sleeping on. There are, people, there are people that they literally think that water is brown. The, col the, the color of the water is brown. brown. And th there are people that think like that and yet we there, we think a lot of not most but a lot of people 
think about, uh, think, uh, you know, greedy. Mm. There's nothing wrong with uh, being the best. There's nothing wrong of reaching course. the top. Mm -hmm. We all want to reach the top. We all, we, we're all the best. Right. We live in a great country. We are the best. But think if today you have water, tomorrow you might not you have might it. Not. Just if you have something today, just remember there's someone else that needs it more than you, but you have it and you don't care about it. So. You're right. His Highness the Emir Shah Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Sabah wishes to see Kuwait depend on other resources or revenues other than oil. Let's say, how can the youth help make this happen or support this? Uh, first of all, His Highness uh, Sheikh Sabah uh, and His Highness uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Nasr Sabah, mm -hmm. they uh, uh, they are. Uh, on top of the youth 24-7. They never stop thinking about the youth. They think about the youth more than they think about themselves. They uh, think about their people more than they think about themselves. You will never find uh, a, a, a person uh, or, or a president or a ruler like, right, like our uh, Sheikh. Uh, this is something that is uh, Amazing. That's why. Uh, that's why he was named the humanitarian yeah, leader. Exactly, and and that is something that uh, no, I don't think there has, has ever been uh, a president or, or a sheikh that has been uh, that ever uh, had that mental uh, 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 mental way of thinking like uh, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed. Um, <coughs> but Kuwait is not uh, n now. A lot of people think Kuwait is only depending on oil, mm -hmm. but His, uh, His Highness Sheikh Nasser Sabah Ahmed, he is, there is a, a um, what's it called, the, um, the island. Mm -hmm. He wants to do the island. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you think about it, it's, it's going to be the new uh, Hong Kong of Kuwait, basically. And, and w when he is doing something like this, remember, no one is doing something to themselves. They're doing something for us. Exactly. Uh, we are not, uh, uh, our sheikhs are not, they're, they're thinking in this way. They're thinking, okay, today we have oil. We have oil for the next at least 100 years. Mm -hmm. But what happens after? What happens when oil runs out? So they want to depend on something else. So um, the Kuwaitis, I've seen a lot of Kuwaiti, they are getting uh, waters. Water, mm -hmm. uh, mineral, mineral water from Europe. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of Kuwaitis that uh, get fresh foods from different uh, countries. They get gadgets, they get um, cars, they buy all these things. And it helps the economy. Our economy, I mean, alhamdulillah, it's been very steady and very well. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit high, which is normal. Uh, our uh, our youth is focusing on this, and they have been always focusing on other things than oil. Mm -hmm. Remember, you as a Kuwaiti, you as a Kuwaiti citizen, always think that you can't grab oil in your hand. Of course. Okay. Yes, we have oil, but I'm not gonna take a barrel and you know hop on the <laughs> airplane and go sell it exactly, for, exactly. for for a, a guy, a, a, an oil company in in Texas or somewhere yeah. like that. So uh, we always th have to think about different things. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, in the past two, three years, I, I've seen Kuwaiti youths that are amazingly, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just very, very proud of what I see personally in them. They are, uh, they are going on, they, they are investing in a lot of things in Kuwait. You know how many restaurants we have in Kuwait? No. Uh. <laughs> exactly. You know we have we have like small areas, small s cities uh, that are built just for cafes and restaurants. Exactly. Yes. And you think about it, every restaurant makes you know they they, they earn profit. Of course. So, the, the, and, the, and the reason why the reason why I'm surprised uh, I'm not surprised. Sorry, is because the way our youth is working, the way they. Uh, sponsor these things so sure. this is this is another thing if someone opens a restaurant i'll go open a, a, the same restaurant and i'll still make profit 
Exactly. A lot of people think that, oh, this guy took my idea. Oh, you know what? I, I had an idea, but you know, another guy uh, rushed through it before me. No. You can still make Me, money. Yeah, maybe you have the same idea, but you're going to reconstruct it even better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's why I, I have faith and I believe in the Kuwaiti youth. True. Uh, basically, when we're talking about people signing in and signing out of their jobs, if someone does not like his or her job, what should they do about it? Get up and leave. Leave, just leave. Get up and Not leave. Not think about the consequences. Wh wh where will I get my salary from? Get up and leave. See, um, never, never, uh, never teach yourself to be living on a good budget weekly. For example, for example, uh, can I give you as an example? Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay, for example, you. Uh, give yourself a budget of 500 Kuwaiti dinar mm -hmm. every week to spend mm -hmm. on anything. Going to um, expenses like uh, gas, going to salon, eat restaurants, everything. So if you put yourself 500 Kuwaiti dinar a week, tomorrow something is going to happen and you won't have 500, tomorrow you'll have 100. So you got used to having 500 a week, basically. Uh, the reason why I say get up and leave, now going back to uh, the job, the, uh, the reason why I say go, go get up, stand up and leave is because if you are not willing to, if you are working in a place that you don't like and you, you hate it, simple, get up and leave because this is going to affect you more in the long run. Doesn't, uh, doesn't care, sorry, I, I don't care about uh, if you're making good money. If you're making good money, that's good. But if you hate your job, then why stay in it? Now, if you hate your job because they're, because they're strict with you have to be there early and you know, be on time, now that's something you know, you're not motivated. All right? But no, if you hate your job because literally you hate your job, no, stand up and leave. Don't care about how much they pay you. Don't care about all these things. Unfortunately, if you are in your job because of the money, then I say, uh, I, I just see, feel very sorry for, your, uh, for you, uh, not you, but you know. Yes, I uh, understand. Because um, not everything is with money. Not, not, not everything is money. Exactly. To, and to this will actually affect you mentally exactly. in the long run. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, it, it will affect you mentally. People, people nowadays, when you, drive, when you drive a 2019 uh, brand new car, when you drive a 2019 car, they look at you differently when you drive a 2001, 2002 year old car, sure. which is almost 20 year old car, right? They look at you differently. But it's, it's you know, again, it's, it all goes back to the way people, uh, uh, people, uh, sorry, um, they live, uh, when, when you live because of your salary, this is a point where Money, you're making money take of, over your mental. Exactly. Uh, right, yes. and th that is something that you you don't want. You don't want mm -hmm. that to uh, affect you. True. True. Yeah. Uh, what are the things that motivate Fahd Lani's in life? Failure. Failure yes. motivates you. Failure. Failure is the is the best thing that happens to me. Uh, failure is uh, the key to success. Failure is what makes me wake up in the morning. Failure is what makes me uh, go up the stairs. Failure is what makes me succeed in life. Uh, without failure, there's no success. Um, without failure, there's definitely there's no success. So to, to, to fail you have to acknowledge that there is success. Mm -hmm. I, I, personally, I'm not going to tell anyone how many, how many businesses I've, I've, uh, I've been into. I'm not going to tell them, uh, but I'll tell them this. I failed in almost all of them. And in the future, I'm going to fail. But, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali, may he rest in peace, he said this. He said, there's nothing wrong with falling down because you can get up. But there is something wrong when you fall down and you don't, you don't get up. Exactly. You, know, you fall down and you get up. That's, exactly. that's normal. It's nor normal. Uh, if you specialize in something, 
just be aware on other things in, in businesses. You know, mm. uh, going back to failure, failure is, is the best thing that happens to me and that happened to me. Uh, in the future, it will happen to me. Uh, but you have to be ready. If you're not ready to, to, for failure, then don't think about opening a business. Then don't think about doing anything. Don't think about uh, losing weight. Don't think about uh, falling in love. Don't think about uh, succeeding in a project. Don't think about any of these things exactly. if you are mm. not ready for failure. Uh, for, for example, I wanted to... Um, uh, not before cryptocurrency, back in 2000. 14, 2015, I was, uh, I invested a good amount of money mm -hmm. in uh, Forex. Mm -hmm. uh, the company has a name. I'm not going to say the company's okay. name. You're on, you're on <laughs> yeah. TV camera. So um, <coughs> uh, I invested, and uh, after the Obama uh, signed uh, the papers with the Iran, uh, mm -hmm. I lost most of my money, and uh, th this is, I want to go back on, I think your second question or third question on Business 101, mm -hmm. this is something that I really want to give uh, our Kuwaiti youths an idea. Um, always invest on something where you can hold. Never invest something that you can't touch. This is what my father taught me since I was a kid. Never invest something that you cannot see and you cannot touch. Now, if I tell you, oh, let's go to the stock exchange and invest, but you can't hold it. This is worse than stock exchange. This is... This is Cryptocurrencies, uh, yes. Exactly, yes. right? And um, <clears throat> so, so uh, this is something that I, I tell them from a guy that failed. Some, some which they might do, they, they might uh, uh, invest in something that they can't hold, uh, either Forex uh, mm. or um, uh, stocks or anything, and they will succeed, they will make money, that's something no problem. But my advice is always invest on something that you can hold. Always, uh, always invest your money on something that you can grab and you can see and you can touch and you can feel. That is basic. Because it's it's different. You have you have you have something in your hand tomorrow. By the end of the day, you have something in your hand. But this is just basically just gambling your money. Exactly. That's such a wise uh, actually advice from your father. Yes. Uh, and you're probably going to take it on the next generation, I maybe our so. kids yes. and uh, grandkids. Um, do you believe the lack of uh, equal opportunities and nepotism can weaken motivation? <coughs> yes. Uh, sorry, what was the question again? Uh, do you believe the lack of equal opportunity, uh -huh. okay, between let's say uh, men and women, let's say? See, well, it's normal. Uh, not talking about society. Mm -hmm. Not talking about. We're just talking about general in life. Mm -hmm. People look different. Different uh, people look at women differently, and people. Some people look at men differently. Which is something that goes back to the, uh, not traditions, it go, goes back on their mental. Uh, some are close-minded, they won't, they won't sit in front of uh, a, a young lady like you, and like I'm sitting in front of you. And some won't even look, and some won't talk, and some always look at them, some look at them down, some look at them as, as no, they are respected, and, and this is what, uh, what I believe, and this is how, how my country uh, taught me, how uh, His Highness Sheikh Sabah always teaches us this mm -hmm. thing is uh, a woman is valuable and a, a, a woman is a, is, a, is, a, is a crystal diamond and she has to be um, uh, uh, treated like like uh, basically crystal diamond uh, uh, now about equality yes um, you will find obstacles jobs find. yes you will find obstacles where where a job won't hire you just because you're a female normal you will find a job where just because they don't like a certain name of my name mm -hmm. they won't hire me you will find sure. just because the way I am the way I speak they won't hire me which is something goes back to them they I always say this if if someone turns you back if, if someone sorry turns you down don't don't think that you lost them. You they lost you because you know who you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. uh, so, f for example, now not talking about.
females or males in Kuwait, but generally speaking, uh, you'll find people that graduated with political science degrees, which their aim is to go to uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, they won't get accepted. And you will find people that their degree is law, and they will get accepted, which is life. This is life. Never, never, this is why I always say, never expect things that are going to happen to you. Now, always have, have something uh, different. If I'm not going to go, if I'm not going to get accepted to this uh, specific ministry, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to me if I don't get accepted? Something else is going to happen. Of course, something better. Exactly, something better. Yes. If something bad happens to you, mm -hmm. remember, if something bad happens to you, believe me, it's something, it's for the okay. good. Okay. Nothing happens for the bad. Another, uh, sorry, for the worst. Mr. Fad, thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, this interview. We wish you great success with your, your new initiative for the youth, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was thanks definitely so a pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Thanks a Thank lot. You. This brings us to the conclusion of tonight's episode of Kuwait in 30 Minutes. We see, hope to see you again at the same time next week. Our highly dedicated team of correspondents is constantly out in the field searching for reports that matter most to you. Thank you very much and have a good night.